Thanks, thanks, yeah. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Dave from University of Florida. I'm here to present our paper on Android security. Um, this is a collaboration with uh, Samsung Research America. All right, uh, does anyone remember this sound? All right, I basically can't tell how old you guys are. Uh, but if you, if you have ever logged into a BBS, uh, it's uh, probably that you own a Haze modem like this. Uh, that is the sound when the modem trying to get connected to the BBS. And uh, what happens under the hood is uh, the computer software issues AT command to uh, control the modem to establish, establish this connection. Uh, in this case, for example, uh, we have uh, two modems and the computer software issues a command called ATD to uh, instruct modem A to dial a number. And after ringing for a while, uh, the remote computer software issues a command called ATA instructing modem B to answer the call. Uh, thus, the two modems got connected, and thus the two computers. And after a while, the remote computer might issue ATH command, which hang up the call, thus closing the communication. Um, these AT commands are designed to control modems. They are as old as BBS. But uh, what you probably haven't realized is we can control Android phones using AT commands. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about um, the systematic study we have done uh, of AT commands within the Android ecosystem. Um, for some of you, this might not be news. Uh, you might be familiar with uh, previous works uh, discovering AT commands in smartphones, such as the free AT command discovered on Samsung phones, including enabling USB debugging uh, and Wi-Fi. A, uh, a Black Hat talk also revealed how to uh, flash malicious firmware images using AT commands. And uh, we can find a bunch of uh, AT commands listed on XDA forum as well. Unfortunately, this uh, ad hoc previous work uh, have only touched the tip of the iceberg. As a result, the prevalence is still unclear. We still have no idea how many AT commands are there inside the Android ecosystem. The functionality is still unclear. Unlike the standardized AT commands, most of these commands are not documented at all. The security impact is still unclear. By the time of writing, uh, only few AT commands are well known to have security impact. What we found was this AT command act as a largely vendor-specific API, exposing a vast array of functionalities. And this can be accessed uh, on certain phones simply by plugging a USB cable in, often without the user of the owner even noticing. Um, so in the rest of the talk, we're going to show how we did this systematic study. The first question is how to find these uh, AT commands. So except AOSP and Lineage, most of these Android customizations uh, are closed source. So we need a way to extract AT commands from the firmware images directly. The second question is how to test them. We need a framework to send out this AT command and collect the response from the phones. The last question is how to abuse them. So we probably need to combine both static and dynamic analysis tools to figure out how this command flow within the system and how certain commands are processed uh, by uh, native daemons or applications. Before we start, let's take a look at these AT commands again. Uh, they were designed to control modems. The initial AT command was invented by Dennis Hayes. Uh, we have seen the ATD command, which is used to dial a number. Uh, as the advancing of uh, wireless communications, we have uh, ITU, TETSI defined AT command sets, which are used to support GSM, 3G, 4G. One example here is this uh, AT plus CMGS, which is used to send out a SMS message. And then we have these Android specific AT commands. Uh, these AT commands are not standardized, and they were created or added mainly due to vendors' customization. One example here is this AT plus USB debug, which enables USB debugging within the Android system. If you look into this uh, Android specific AT commands, we will see they basically follow this, uh, this pattern. They always start with AT, uh, short for attention, followed by an expansion symbol, which could be uh, percent plus and percent and so on, uh, followed by the actual command name, as well as uh, optional parameters. So let's start our systematic by finding these AT commands within the Android ecosystem. Step one, uh, we crawled and downloaded over 
2,000 firmware images across 11 uh, different vendors. And surprisingly, this step is not as straightforward as one would expect. Some vendors tried their best to prevent us from downloading their stock firmware image, either by making them really hard to find or by asking a lot of uh, required information. And third party uh, websites also often deploy traffic control because they believe we were launching DOS attacks because each firmware image is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, around one gigabyte. But finally, we, we, we made it. And once we have all the firmware images, we go to step two. Uh, we try to unzip or unpack this firmware image and go through each file. And uh, this step tends to be more challenging and annoying, mainly due to the variance of the image format. Uh, even for the same vendor, the, the image format keeps changing. Uh, in the worst case, we need to find an unpacker per vendor, per Android version, and per file model. Once we are inside the firmware image, we go through each file. If this is a zip file, we unzip it. If this is a file system file, we mount, we mount it. If this is an APP file, we decompile it. If this is a binary file, we run string command to extract all the symbols. And once we have all the files, uh, we just grab the AT command based on a complex regex we designed. So in short, we want to find as many potential AT commands as possible while keeping the uh, false positive low. And then step three, we process and parse all these potential AT commands to find those that are likely to be real AT commands, and we save them into a database. So in the end, we discovered 3,500 unique AT commands. We also crawled um, some specifications and collected over 200 standardized AT commands. If we look at the Android version distribution among our 2,000 firmware images, uh, we have covered Android version, version from 2.1 to 7.1. Uh, by the time of crawling, uh, Android 8 was not widely adopted. Um, the majority uh, version of, of our firmware images are uh, the newer versions starting from Android 4.4 to 7.1. If we compare with the platform versions from the Google Play Store, we'll see our data seems to be well aligned with the real world usage. And then we look at the AT command distribution per vendor. The right figure is, is for Google, except some exceptions on Android 4.x versions. The average number of AT commands within Google is around 100. Note that half of them are not standardized AT commands. And then the middle figure is uh, for Samsung. Um, as you can see, the, the, the number of AD commands keeps increasing as the Android version grows. And after Android 4.3, the average number of AD commands for Samsung is around 400. Uh, the right figure is for LG, similar with Samsung. Um, the number of AD commands keeps increasing, and the average number is around 300. As you can see, vendors do add more AT commands during their customizations. So once we have all the AT commands, uh, we need to test them. Uh, besides the basic functionality, we also want to know if um, um, some command found from one vendor would work for the other vendor, or if there exists some command which would behave differently across vendors. The only setup we need is a USB connection between an Android phone and a host computer. And we also require um, all these phones to expose a USB CDC ECM interface, which is also known as the USB modem interface. And this interface would create a C report on the host machine for us to send out the AT commands. Um, note that in most cases, this USB functionality is not, act, is not active. So we use USB switcher uh, to activate this interface by switching the current USB configurations. Um, this USB switcher was uh, initially designed for Samsung phones and we extended to support other vendors. And once we have this simple setup ready, uh, we implemented automation script to send out AT commands and collect the response from the phones. One of the most questions uh, here is how many phones do actually have this USB modem interface? Uh, to answer this question, we examined 14 different Android devices. It turns out Six of them expose this uh, modem interface by default. Four of them can expose this USB functionality after being rooted. Among these 10 devices, we choose eight to test against AT commands, including three Samsung, two LG, uh, two Asus, and one Nexus. 
Um, while some AT command response might be um, fairly informative, a lot of them would just return OK. And in this case, uh, we need to combine both static and dynamic analysis to have a better understanding of this AT command, as well as finding vulnerabilities. So we start with finding the top five binaries which contains the most number of AT commands. Uh, here we focus on the top one binaries, which are the real library for Google, uh, a native daemon called AT distributor for Samsung, and a native daemon called ATD for LG. And then we enable ADB debugging and use Logcat to see how this command flow within the system. It turns out both AT distributor and ATD are the first doors of AT commands uh, within the system. And then we use IDAPRO to see how certain commands are processed within these native daemons. Although we were not able to closely uh, examine all of the 3,500 unique AT commands, uh, we put some interesting ones here in the next few slides. So this command put the phone into download mode, uh, enabling firmware flashing directly. This command factory reset uh, the phone, thus erasing all the used data. And if you accidentally break your LG phone into the blue screen on the right, uh, we have discovered two commands which can unbreak your LG phone. And we also discovered one command which can break your LG phone. And if you are interested in free breaking service, you can DM me directly. Um, command here uh, bypass Android security mechanism. Uh, yes, we can make a call, hang up a call, answer a call just from a USB cable. And it does not matter whether or not the screen is locked. Uh, this command changes the IMEI value, which is the unique identity of the uh, mobile device. This command enables ADB debugging again. This keylog command unlocks the, the screen lock, even if it is pin protected. This command allows us to sending out keypads, SMS messages, and even connecting to the internet. So again, all we need is a USB connection. Then we can send out these uh, AT commands to, to the phones. Command showing here either leaks some sensitive information or um, is further ex uh, exploitation. We found 34 AT commands falling uh, into this category. Um, this command provides a lot of information about the phone and the system, including MEI or file system usage. One example here is this AT plus dev con info. Uh, as you can see, it gives you a lot of information about the phone, uh, including IMEI. These two commands list all the AT commands supported by uh, the, the baseband processor. Uh, we also use these two commands to cross-check all the AT commands we extracted from the firmware uh, and, and found zero missing. These two commands read procfs and sysfs on Linux. Uh, as we will show later in the demo, we use this command to read arbitrary uh, data under the SD card like this. We also discovered another category of AT commands uh, enabling extra debugging capabilities, such as um, SysTrace. And it seems these commands are only available to Infineon uh, baseband processors. And the Intel Android uh, USB driver supports this functionality, uh, naming it the modem AT proxy. Although we're not able to uh, enable this functionality without routing the phone, this command have already been have already been used to reverse engineering the baseband processor. So for more information, please check out the link. Uh, our slides will be available on Usenix website soon. Commands shown here are related with hidden menus. Um, these hidden menus are mainly designed for debugging and testing purpose. At this point, uh, it's not clear how an attacker could use these menus to exploit the phone but they do uh, impose some security concerns. And another, another notice here is the commands containing stream VZW. Uh, it seems like uh, vendors also add new AT commands for carriers. All right, this is uh, demo time. We'll demonstrate um, two attacks. The first attacks um, unlock the screen and send out a touch screen event to operate the phone, just like a real human being uh, playing with the phone. Um, the second attack um, enables USB debugging. 
uh, and leverages the procfs read AD command to launch a confused deputy pass traversal reading arbitrary data under the SD card. This next attack will demonstrate from start to finish the ability to bypass the LG G4's lock screen and enable USB developer options all without user interaction. Notice that we typed in a passcode and it was incorrect. But even if we've forgotten the passcode, if we have access to the AT command interface, we can issue a special command that allows us to bypass the lock screen. Additionally, we can automate touch events to reach the settings menu. Go to developer options. Enable developer options, bypass any prompts, and then finally enable USB debugging, allowing us to get an ADB shell. From this point, we would be able to issue arbitrary commands to the phone with the privilege of ADB, but this includes the ability to install applications. For this next demo, we will be directly interacting with the LG G4 via the new AT command interface. First, we switch the phone into the AT command mode. And then we open an AT interact prompt, which allows us to interactively issue and receive the responses to AT commands. Once the prompt is established, we issue a simple command to get some information about the phone. But next, we issue a special command found on LG devices, which allows us to enable ADB without developer options. Notice on the right side, we are now receiving logcat data directly from the phone without having developer options enabled. This gives us insight into what's happening in the phone as we issue AT commands. The next command is the AT proc act command. This was used by developers to view the proc file system to get insight into what processes are running. But we have found a path traversal vulnerability in this command, which allows us to read arbitrary files from the phone as long as the privilege of the AT command distributor is sufficient. Cool. Uh, I hope you enjoyed our demo. Special thanks to Grant who made this uh, this this video demo. Um, now uh, it's time to talk about mitigations and uh, and uh, fixes. So from vendor's perspective, the most straightforward fix would be to remove this USB modeling interface because it seems unlikely that normal users would need this functionality. But just in case where it seems impossible to remove this USB functionality, we can always restrict the access to this USB functionality, just as we need to root the phone to uh, access this functionality. Another good um, security mechanism is to use whitelist. So by default, all these AT commands should be blocked on unless permitted within the whitelist. From user's perspective, the good news is both Samsung and LG have issued security updates uh, because we reported this vulnerability earlier on February. So if you have Android phones, please update your Android. So now what? Um, are we done here? Well, nope. As we mentioned, all these Android specific, uh, specific AT commands are not documented. So we build an online database to document their usages, uh, parameters, and the Android firmware, uh, firmware information containing these, uh, these commands. Although we're still working on filling up um, more information for each, uh, for each AT command, but the basic query interface is there. We also um, open source our tools for the AT command testing. I will be on the job market next year uh, looking for research positions in both re, uh, industry and ac academia. If, it, if you are interested in my research, uh, please visit my personal website for more information. Uh, thanks, I can take questions now. Hi, John Criswell, University of Rochester. Uh, so forgive my ignorance, but it wasn't clear to me whether this is something that's remotely exploitable over cellular or whether it's something that's only exploitable once you have physical access to the device and can uh, gain a USB connection to it. Uh, right now, it requires a USB connection. Uh, although we're working on something else like Bluetooth, because it turns out Bluetooth also contains AT command. 
So probably in the future, we can remotely exploit this from Bluetooth module. Uh, we're still working on that. OK, thank you. Uh, Carl Kosher, University of Washington. Uh, so one of the most surprising things that I saw here is it looked like a lot of these AT commands were being processed at like the Android or OS level as opposed to the baseband level. Right. And I was uh, wondering uh, if you found any issues at like the baseband level or if you thought you might be missing certain AT commands from uh, uh, that you could pull out of baseband images, for example? Um, so I guess like there are two questions. Uh, the first question is we focused on the Android specific AT commands, although we do find some like modern specific AT commands like ATD. Uh, but um, right now we uh, we focusing on the Android specific AT commands. Uh, we also find some commands within the modern image. Um, but again, like uh, that is not our focus right now. Um, I think the second question was, uh, Sorry. The, the, I was just uh, wondering if, um, so it sounds like your focus was on the, the OS level AT yes, commands. Yes, yes. Uh, I was just wondering if you also found anything with the, the baseband AT commands, but it sounds like that wasn't your focus. Right. Um, yes, basically yes. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Did you have any opportunities to fuzz the real interface? Uh, you know what, like uh, the first step we did was try to send out whatever garbage to the uh, to the ET command interface, but it turns out it does not work that well. Um, then we, we start to realize, let's try to find all the ET commands and try to use them to f fuzz the phone, mm -hmm. uh, rather than just sending out some garbage. So did you, did, did you get any chance then to see where, and, and this kind of ties into the last question, of where you might have some way of testing baseband security going through this interface from the software OS side into the uh, sort of that point to point between the baseband modem and the Android uh, drivers? Um, you know what, this, this reminds me of another USB interface which is called diagnostic interface. Mm -hmm. And some, somehow like uh, I've seen a lot of uh, Qualcomm proprietary uh, software, which can basically use that interface uh, to connect with the modem uh, and to see like all this air packet in the fly or something. Mm -hmm. um, but I have no idea how to trigger this from a normal like USB modem interface. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thanks.